Now, let's shift to another topic. If the germline is telomerase positive, and that's how it maintains its immortality, if we can take cells from that germline lineage and make these regenerative medicine things happen, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could take a cell from the body and somehow take it back to that? That would allow you to make all these cells your own. An interesting question would be, would you reset the clock of aging? Here's how it works. Here's an egg, this is cow. Here's an egg cell, there's the DNA, that's a polar body. This is cloning. We remove the chromosomes, and we take a floating cell. This is a skin fibroblast from a cow's ear. Take it up in a little micropipette. Now we're, what we're doing is transferring actually the whole cell into the oocyte, and actually not actually putting into the oocyte. Notice we put it next to the oocyte here. We get a little tap to push the cells in contact, and then we electrofuse the cells together. Now what happened was the early experiments suggested that cloning does not reset the clock of aging, so Dolly was born old. Maybe many of you heard that story. We did a very careful study of this in the year 2000, and the hope that we could take a cell from a human literally back in time, reversing the aging of a, in development of a human cell to make the cells that we were born indistinguishable from the cells we were born from decades earlier. On this thesis that I started today, that the germline is fully capable of, doing, of, of maintaining immortality, but that it could reprogram it too. And of course, the idea would then be, wouldn't this be a dream if we could take an old person, literally make the cells that they were born from, and then reconstitute the, the immune system, the vascular system, arthritis, you know, the cartilage in their joints or whatever. That was the concept of therapeutic cloning. And what was exciting, and we published in 2000, was we could take cells that were at or near senescence, bovine cells, and you clone them, and it reset the clock of aging, even younger than they normally were. <coughs> you know, in virtually all the cases we studied. But it worked. Reactivated telomerase, reset the clock, reset development. So the goal was uh, to do this in human. Some of you may remember uh, 2001, poor little Mike West in front of the President Bush and everything else because we cloned human embryos. The goal was not to clone humans. The goal was to reset the clock of aging and to make regenerative medicine therapies possible. You know what? We published this data. We showed we could, we could reconstitute. We got some reprogramming. We got evidence of it. We could not get embryos that would make stem cell lines. And then there were reports that it did, happen, did work. Those were later refuted. To my knowledge, no one yet today has yet gotten viable stem cells through nuclear transfer. But the good news is we can do it now. So we uh, filed a patent in 2005 when I was at ACT, which we now have at Biotime, <coughs> on IPS. <clears throat> this is called induced pluripotent stem cell technology. So the concept is, the same thing, taking a cell from the body back in time, but using defined molecular components. What we do is we have a technology where we take cells, expose them to these master regulators of gene expression, and it's too much, it's kind of complicated, and we have to remodel the nuclear lamina to make all this work and so on. But the concept is just like cloning, we've broken down cloning into constituent steps that we can do in mass, cheaply, far easier than with nuclear transfer, and make patient-specific, uh, what now called IPS cells, because there was never an embryo. And of course, the benefit of IPS technology is you uh, get around a lot of the ethical debate. So here are ES cells, here are mortal somatic cells where the clock is ticking away, and now we can take these cells and reverse them back to make the original cells from which they uh, were originally made. So to put it back in our diagram, taking these cells back in time, back to the germline, just like it happens in normal reproduction, um, except we're not using normal reproduction. So you, I think you can get to catch the idea. So what we believe we have the technologies to do today, uh, we believe the technology is on the table. Uh, uh, certainly need to be tested for safety and efficacy. I'm not suggesting that they're necessarily ready today for human uh, therapeutic use, but would be to take cells from an aged person 
and through IPS technology, reset telomere length and development back to the beginning of life. We now know how to make hemangioblasts in vitro in large, virtually unlimited quantities, and we could reconstitute the immune and vascular system of an old person with the cells that you were born with. Of course, if we can do that, we could do it with other kinds of cells, uh, the retina, the cartilage, the joints, heart muscle, and so on. So there's a lot of thoughts I'm laying out for you today. Um, but base, the basic concept is aging as we see it today is a dark abyss. It's, it's not pretty, seen in this French uh, tombstone. Um, you notice here a man and a woman, uh, the compassion uh, of, of facing age-related disease and death. This is uh, the quintessential myth of this. This is of Isis, who out of love for Osiris, uh, made him immortal. <laughs> Not exactly clear how, but look at this. This is the ancient Egyptian symbol for the immortality sign that we started out talking about. But the way they did it is they said, Life has a beginning and end. It's like a rope. Could we only find a way to have the, like, telomeres not go away? Could we somehow make a circle through human effort bound together here to make an immortal circle? Their inversion of the infinity sign. It's called the Shen Ring. And who did it? It was Isis, out of love for her husband. So I think our, my, our challenge in today's society, with this age wave coming our way, the aging and the disease of our loved ones in front of us, can we find a way to have enough compassion and focus our efforts to actually translate these basic insights into the biology of aging into something that can help us all live healthier and hopefully longer? Thank you very much.